Hey guys. We live? I think so. Well, happy Friday, everybody. It's David Gross back with Miss Sprite. Sprite, how are you today? I'm good, David. How are you? Good, good. Um, we uh, hopefully will spend a few minutes with you and help your business grow and be successful. As always, we we got lots of great things. I should say we, it's mostly Sprite, and so she loves to prepare for helping you and uh, just, just, you know, just grow your business. And so a couple of housekeeping items. I want to thank everybody who came by our booth at the NBM Secaucus show. Yeah. We had an absolutely awesome time. It was great to share. The class was well attended, and uh, we're going to do it again. That's right. Can you guess where, Miss Bright? Um, Indianapolis. Indianapolis. So Indianapolis is uh, coming up real fast here. And um, so I think it's, uh, yeah, yeah, okay. Indianapolis, when is the date of that it show? Is the 13th through the 15th of September. So that's a Thursday, Friday, Saturday, I guess. Right. Yep. And so usually they put my class on probably on Thursday at 8 o'clock. Um, so I am first. And if you come to my class, guess what? You'll get to see all the show because it opens at 10. Um, in addition, I will give out a $25 coupon to everybody who attends the show. You can use that coupon to buy whatever you want from us. And then as a big bonus for everybody that comes by the booth, we're going to give you a $25 coupon for purchasing select new products, um, especially our glass, our color, color light glass and acrylic. So very good. We've done a couple of great webinars this week. And I think uh, those will be posted. One of them's already posted. Uh, Roger Wombalt from Corel at a two-hour boot camp, sublima I mean, uh, Corel 101 kind of um, uh, webinar. So check that out. It's great to be able to rewatch these, especially yeah. ones um, with he is. He's Mr. Corel. Yeah. So take advantage of that. Um, in addition, uh, towards the latter part of September will be the um, ISS Fort Worth show, September 27th through 29th, and uh, please check out that. One thing I forgot to mention, just like in Secaucus in Indianapolis, we will have two booths. We'll have our coloring booth, and we, we need to have a you know a little thing of the uh, coloring uh, sublimation markers in here. They are super cool, cool for $35, you get 10 great colors to color with and I can't tell you how exciting it is maybe put together a coloring party for an organization school church uh, you name it um, to color your little heart out and then maybe carry with it to the event at one of the small heat presses uh, like say the uh, JP 14 so and don't forget you can also use them in your silhouette so um, you know if you have a design you want to do uh, you design it in your silhouette you uh, put your uh, marker in uh, with a pen holder set your settings to pen and it will draw your design for you and I've heard of people using it also in all the other cutters out there yeah. um, I I say silhouette because that's what I have, but I'm I'm sure it'll work in your yeah, cricket. Yeah, the cricket or, and, and uh, uh, even your graph tech because really those cutters are just um, graphic plotters. So you know you can you can so, uh, use it with anything. Right, right. Uh, any uh, and so we welcome your questions. Lindsay is behind the camera today, and so if you've got comments, hopefully audio is good, video is good. Miss Sprite, what are we going to do today? <laughs> Okay, well, we have some new products, and we're also going to do some new stuff today. Um, so I've been working a little bit with Doug DeWitt. I'm sure you guys all know him. He's our, our transfer paper master. And uh, I'm going to see if I can get some Flex Soft to work on some of our metal. Um, you know, kind of mixing some media and uh, see, how that, see how that works. So uh, we have some new products as well. Unisub just came out with a really cute line of uh, wooden ornaments and magnets and keychains. Um, but before we delve into that, uh, I'm going to, like David likes to say, it's cooking with Sprite. So I'm going to try to get everything, you know, temperature and time right. So the first thing I want to do is I'm going to press this piece of metal. And I just... So somebody asked what paper we use for the markers, and you just use regular copy paper. Um, the sublimation paper has a coating on it, 
and that coating will eventually um, you know, ruin your markers quicker than if you were just using the regular copy paper. Uh, and what I've done in the past is I've ran copy paper through my sublimation printer with sublimation inks doing like a black outline, um, like a coloring book. And then the kids can come in, they can color in the lines, which they are approved for nine years and up now. Um, and yeah, and then you just take it and sublimate it to your, your substrate. Yeah, and this, uh, some people are surprised that you can use plain paper, quote, quote, with sublimation. In the sublimation world, the active ingredient is the ink, not the paper. The paper simply carries the ink from the printer to the heat press. Now, why do we use sublimation paper for normal printing is because we want the dots to stay really, really sharp and crisp so we have a good photographic quality image. And we also want to let go of the ink and, and let the ink come right off the paper so the the, the sublimation coating keeps the ink right on the surface. So um, I have done some printing with the sublimation paper and markers in a hybrid design, like come up with a cute design and then have a personalization area, something like that. So we're learning um, and, and people are telling us all sorts of things. Some people <clears throat> have been coloring directly onto a substrate like our um, uh, sandstone coasters, the car coasters, the uh, round square, so all sorts of wild, wild stuff. All right, guys, so I just have this 12 by 18 image. Um, this is a, our 12 by 18 matte metal. Um, if you guys saw, I hovered it under my heat press for about 20 seconds just to get any of that excess moisture out. Um, moisture is the devil. Well, and you notice that the peel coat she removed from the metal was blue. Blue is the indication that this is matte coated. Clear is generally glossy. Um, yellow would indicate that it's the outdoor version. So um, the color is just an indication of, of the, the coating that's been applied to the metal. All right, I'm gonna use a piece of butcher paper on the bottom. I'm gonna just sort of press this image face down and I'm gonna cover it with our um, our fabric, this is item F0008. You guys know I, this is the same piece that I've used on every single Facebook Live. I don't plan on getting rid of it anytime soon. So um, remember these you can use over and over and over again. And uh, David, you can talk about this and why this is so important on the metal. So, so the way we put the metal, we got videos to, to show you, but typical metal protocol is piece of paper on the bottom, the metal is face up, transfer is face down, fabric on top. And the idea is that when moisture comes out of the coating of the metal, the, the fabric allows it to dissipate. So the fabric acts as an uncompressible vent to let the moisture move away from the metal because the moisture is now turning into steam and if it's allowed to pool, it will ruin your, your transfer. So um, that's just typical protocol we use. Um, I did have one more thing to talk about that. Um, I'm not quite sure what it was. With the paper? Yeah, can't remember. But um, you, as you have questions, concerns, but ultimately I tell everybody that when you're testing a new substrate, always do a black test, RGB000. And if you get a great black, um, you're dialed in. Um, and, and some people will call and say, hey, you know, I'm not sure about my black. It doesn't look so good. And I'll say, go take it outside and, and see what it looks like outside because inside many people have lighting that's not full spectrum. And so it can be a, a big time optical illusion uh, with, with trying to make critical color decisions. Here in our little demo room, I've got some uh, nice lights that are shining on us, they're full spectrum uh, lights and so they help us achieve um, you know a, a good visual display of the color. Yeah. Someone wants to know what was the number for the fabric? Uh, F0, the number for the fabric, the item number for the fabric is F0008. I think it's three zeros and an eight. It's our polypoplin fabric. Yeah, so the fabric is is a very tight weave fabric almost to a shiny. Um, it is polyester. Uh, you wouldn't want to use the cotton. So fabric is almost free. Um, so, you know, order it with your, you know, next time you place an order.
All right, and I don't know if you guys saw, but when I taped this metal, because it is a, a larger piece of metal, I taped it all the way down the sides. And so I'm just gonna, like I always do, like to check and make sure everything looks good, and it does. You guys can see I have a nice full transfer of ink to my metal. Let's see, it looks pretty good. Um, so before I do anything else with this metal, I'm going to add some of our Subless Sparkle. So you guys have cool. seen this in the previous weeks. Um, so I just took this, I don't know if you can see it very well. I took it uh, in my silhouette and just cut out a couple of stars. So. Very nice. Well, yeah. thank you. So now we're just gonna set it on there. Same temperature, 400 degrees. And we're gonna do this for about a minute. And so like I said, we are going across uh, multiple medias today. So we have our metal, we have our subless sparkle, and then we're gonna do our flex soft. So the question is, can you buy the fabric in a fabric store? In, in a pinch, you could go into a Joanne's Hancock's uh, and possibly Walmart and look for a tight weed, weave 100% polyester fabric and, and try it. Um, um, and so, you know, go for it. What, what we have here is, is, a, is a tighter weave, smoother, um, so that, you know, it's, it's, it would be very difficult to see the pattern of the fabric on, on the product. But again, um, do what you think best. You're welcome to try. Yeah. One thing uh, while Sprite's pressing it, um, a, a good trick to do is to make your transfer a little bit longer and put your reorder information at the bottom of the transfer so that when you fold it, you sublimate that information on the back of the metal. Um, really great way to ensure that the person who actually receives the product um, will, um, will know where it came from. All right, so I'm just gonna take this and kind of rub it down a little bit. And who? steamy and so the effect that I wanted was I wanted the subla sparkle to kind of sublimate a little bit so it pulled some of that ink out of the bottom and made it a little blue which is what I wanted um, if you want to do this uh, a different way I would put the subla sparkle on first and then sublimate um, and that way you can actually sublimate the subla sparkle uh, but I kind of wanted this effect so I have it here, and I'm just going to set this on my cool plate and let it cool, and then I'm going to cold peel my subtle sparkle off. So, um, some of you may ask, what's a cool plate? So, a cool plate, um, you can, Lindsay, you want to scan over there, I'm not, you know, but it's basically a, a box with a fan in it, and what it does is, um, it, it tries to cool things very, very fast. And it really does. I mean, I can already touch the metal with my hand. So They're, yeah. they're remarkable and, and sort of, I guess you would say it's, it's more, uh, it's a mature sublimation accessory um, because, you know, we, we all get very impatient. We want things done really fast. And, and so that's the, the sublimation mentality is, is um, sort of, you know, a, a rush of ADD. How about that? Paul wants to know: Will the heat distort the image? Will the heat distort the image? Um, so the heat did not distort the image. Um, so I, I understand what he's asking. So since we're sublimating, quote, since we're hitting it with heat a second time, um, 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 the question is: Does it mess it up? And in general, on the sublimation coating, it's incredibly good. So, um, um, you know, so, so generally, no. You know, a lot of people will ask, for instance, um, can I uh, sublimate um, a second time? For instance, let's say you're doing a shirt. Let's say you've got a smaller printer or for whatever reason, and you want to add a name to a shirt. Um, generally speaking, um, you can be successful at that. Um, 
So, so yes, um, it, it generally works. But again, it's one thing, you know, just make sure you don't overcook it, um, something like that. Okay. All right. So let's move on to our new stuff. Okay. So Unisub has come out with new wood shapes and I just absolutely love this wood. Um, we have our new wooden keychain. We have our new uh, Berlin style ornament, our new Prague style ornament, and then our wooden magnet. So um, these are double sided, but one side is going to have more wood grain than the other one. So it's up to you um, how you want it to look, whether you want it to look more natural or, um, you know, it's up to you. You have a choice. So these are really easy to do. Um, we're just going to do these for, uh, I think, 45 seconds at 400 degrees. Yeah. And um, we've, we've obviously got a very large family of, of Christmas ornaments. So now is the time to start sampling the ornaments and get gearing up. Um, one of the things I recommend is that you begin to, say, connect with everybody you know, organizations, schools, um, clubs, whatever. See if you can get them to work in uh, a fundraiser for their organization. And in fact, it might, e might not even be an official fundraiser. Just simply say, hey, let me come to your meeting. Um, let me come to your meeting and set up a display and we'll donate a certain portion of the profits to the organization. Um, you know, you can give them a dollar or two for each ornament. Let's say you sell them for $20, maybe give them $5. Um, so you make plenty of money doing it. Um, and then you can choose, say, a double side product. So one side is your personalized side and the other can be the organization side. Um, so Christmas ornaments to me are just awesome. Um, I did a similar concept for our Mardi Gras organization that I'm a member. I um, got an artist to do a um, Mardi Gras painting and I put it on a uh, piece of the Crumblex metal with a little hinge in the back. Um, just absolutely uh, awesome. I'll bring it uh, for a future uh, video and show you what it looks like, but it is very attractive. So in that case um, I wasn't trying to make money. I was just trying to make sure that for that organization they had a uh, pristine keepsake for that year's ball um, and I you know again my, my reason is a little bit different than yours, but um, um, I, I love the beauty and, and it just it just worked out really well. All right, guys. Questions, Lindsay? Is it working? Someone said, how long do these timber stuff printers sit without using it? Ooh. So the question is, is um, how long can you the printer sit without using it? And um, so certainly the newer printers like the SG400-800, um, I probably wouldn't go past a month um, without using it. But what I would tell you to do is keep the printer turned on and then every couple of days, maybe just send a test page from your computer to the printer. Um, that's very wise. I mean, you are printing with colored water. And so, so water dries up. And, and so you want to take good care of your printer. You know, I started this 26 years ago. And I can tell you that, that the printers today are, are amazingly good um, compared to what we had. Think of the first people that use Windows, for instance, Windows, you'd have to reboot every couple of minutes. And now um, you hardly ever hear of anybody uh, having a Windows crash or having to reboot. So highly reliable. I actually had a crash during my class of Windows. I run the, the, the very, very new beta versions of Windows and also on the Mac side as well. And the darn thing crashed, and so I had to just keep talking and and uh, knowing what was coming up in the uh, class. All right, guys, here is our keychain, and it comes with this really cute jump ring um, and the uh, the actual um, keychain itself. What is this thing called? Uh, 
key ring. Okay, sure. The, uh, the, key, the jump ring and the key ring. Uh, so it's really cute. Let's see if you can see. So I did this for like um, maybe a cabin rental. And then, you know, you give out the cabin with the keys and you get this on the keys. Maybe you can take it home. Really good advertising. Uh, really cute. Good yeah, stuff. if you think about like a, uh, selling to a bed and breakfast, which is one of my favorite ideas, um, they're all going to have a real key. And so sell them uh, something that, that um, really makes the B&B the &B look professional. Um, obviously, one side could be for the, the bed and breakfast. The other side could be the room number. So I don't know if you guys saw, but I pro sprayed, I used pro spray on that one and I'm just gonna use heat tape on this one. There's really, doesn't matter. You can use either or. Um, I'm using SPP paper, but you can use text print paper on these. Um, you know, so um, yeah, they're really, really A lot really of what we do is, is interchangeable and typical engineers like me, we like plan A, plan B. And uh, we've got two great papers. The SPP paper is, I think, the best choice for things like crumble ux um, because it's very heat stable. In other words, some papers will shrink a little bit when hit with heat. The Ditrans SPP, very stable. Um, but the biggest thing is it holds the dots extremely sharp so that you're going to get the, the clearest image. And um, I had a client the other day that was having some banding issues with their printer, and they commented um, that when they transferred, they couldn't see it on the text print, but they grabbed some die trans and they could see it. And it's just, it's, it goes back to that dot gain. Um, and so the, the die trans just has the, the very sharpest uh, dots. And uh, if you guys notice, I am weighting these down in between pressing. Um, they are wood products. You don't have to heat press. Uh, you don't have to pre-press them. But it's always a good idea just to kind of, you know, let them cool under some weight just to make sure they don't get warped. Um, so yeah. So dare I ask how your project came out over so here? So we're, we're coming along. We're coming along. Wow. So the next part is is the scary part. We'll see how that goes. See how it goes. Um, it's probably just had a good record on camera for um, for pushing the envelope, I would say, right? And messing things up. Ah, uh, <laughs> seldom, very seldom, very uh, yeah, seldom. Yeah, you know, I guess, yeah. But you know, it's it's those mess ups that really stand out in your mind, though. Um, all right. So it doesn't take very long to cool at all. Um, these come with a really cute red ribbon. Uh, these are on our website, available to sell. I can't remember if it comes with red or white. These come with red. What, red? Okay. Yeah. And you know... Um, so this is cute. So um, so this was a photo, and uh, the bottom here was snow. And you can see that the snow is now the natural wood. So really, really cute. Great. So idea for you is to to visit your local pet groomer set up a little display um, so that the clients can get their their um, their dog on a Christmas ornament and of course you know hit the cat people as well um, we've got a dog we've got a cat and um, you know we normally tolerate the cat but love the dog so um, my dog brought me a, a, a dead possum the other night does that count wow we could wow. make a make ornaments for it and oh, so you gross. should put a ribbon on it put it on the tree right yeah uh, but um, you know, I've seen the like um, some of the Christmas ornaments our clients have done are their West Highland Terriers, Westies. Oh, they're such cute dogs. I uh, love them. I have a golden retriever. My dad's a veterinarian, so um, we we love dogs and cats. Just... Lindsay, Lindsay has a cute Maltese. Okay. She is adorable. Is that a white dog? Yes. Yeah. yeah. It's got a little yeah. fluffy tail, so cute. We're gonna have to take some pictures of that. Absolutely, Definitely. absolutely. So people will pay big bucks for something with their dog on it. Yeah. Look through the catalog, find stuff, but this time of year, I'd certainly be gearing up for some, some great uh, Christmas um, ornaments. And you know, you think about it, you got Halloween, you've got Thanksgiving, then you got Christmas, you know? Uh, hit them all. Um, All right, one more, one more new Unisub product. 
and then we can talk about some other stuff. Yeah, you know, um, the some of the products we have, um, I think, allow you to sort of have two things in once. For instance, um, I was thinking about doing for um, our Thanksgiving dinner, uh, doing placemats of our linen. And I, I think I'll probably do that. And you could, in theory, have two different themes, if you will, because it's a two-sided product. Um, so, and if you really wanted to go out there, you could have, you know, I guess customized for where the person's supposed to sit, but probably that's a little bit too much. But you can have some absolute gorgeous um, themed for your, your Thanksgiving dinner, for your Christmas. But, you know, my favorite month is, is definitely October because that's when I was born. And so um, having, you know, um, potentially a little, you know, mat out or something for the candy or whatever, or potentially even go through our print services for a custom floor mat. Hang on, guys. This is our prog. Really cute. And they are double sided. You can you can press both sides. So just a really, press one really side at a time. Um, and we're going to do a metal metal anything metal yeah. today. Yeah. Yes, we are. Okay. Yep, yep, yep. Ah, yes. Yeah. So these are. Um, you know, we call these like shabby chic. Uh, they go really, really well with our new linen. Um, you know, I could see doing like a nice rustic theme for the holidays, for uh, Thanksgiving, for, you know, for Christmas. Uh, just really cute. Are we going to um, Yes. So um, I'm darn close to finishing up my plastic plate project. And so um, next week, Miss Bright, we need to finish that up. Um, and these will be plastic plates, um, FDA approved, um, microwavable, and um, so stand by for details on those. I apologize. You know, it's one of those things my mind goes crazy, excuse me, with all the things we could do. All right, guys, so this is our magnet. Really cute. Nice save the date magnet. And um, it comes with this just little magnet, this double-sided or this sticky magnet, you just peel the white backing off. I cut all my fingernails off the other day. There we go. And you stick it on there. And there you go. And uh, I don't know about y'all, but I absolutely love magnets. Um, my refrigerator is just covered with them. Um, so yeah, they're a real big seller. Yeah, I took a um, big piece of the Unis of Steel and made one for my wife, and it's it, it's completely full of the magnets that we collect in our travels. And every time I sort of bump into the wall or something, I hit it hard enough that something will fall off because it's got so many on there. You want to see it again? Okay, all of them, or just just the save the date one? There you go. So the. Obviously, the, uh, I wrote an article on, on wedding and all the wedding gifts. I think it's published at, like, um, oh, you can look around and find it on the website. I'm sure, Lindsay, make sure it's somewhere people can get to. But it, it just, the weddings are just the best opportunity, opportunity for sublimation, bar none, from the save the date all the way through a uh, honeymoon gift. All right, guys. So... Today is the very last day for you to get your monthly uh, gallery contest entry in. Um, it's, uh, this month is back to school month, so your best back to school item. Today is the last day. You have a chance to win $200, $100, or $50. So get those entries in. It ends at midnight. We'll be announcing the winner next week. And speaking of winners... Um, it's one of those awards just random, you know? What word? Uh, the awards for the back to school gifts. No. Okay. No. Um, you know, I don't know. We I, ought to make maybe... one of them where, where just, you know, if you don't think your design is good enough to enter, you enter it, and we're going to, uh, why don't we have a random winner? Okay, so we we'll, can do a random we'll generator. All right. Just a random winner, somebody that takes the time and trouble to share. I mean, the Kite Gallery is such a great opportunity to me to share and give back to the community to help people know sort of um, you know 
maybe what things people are interested in, what great designs there are. You folks out there are just so creative. And speaking of creativity, uh, this week our gallery contest winner, because not only do you have a chance to win every month, you also have a chance to win every single week. So this week it is Kim's Crafts. Kim is from Casey, Illinois. She's been a customer with us since 2014. And Kim did these, uh, these really cute linen coasters. They're um, a Halloween themed linen coaster. And then I have a close up. Way to go, Kim. Yeah, and the packaging is really cute. The way you tied them all together. There we go. <laughs> so good job, Kim. Uh, you have won $25 in Condi credits. Um, you should be receiving an email if you haven't already. So awesome. Awesome. Thank you, Kim. Okay, so let's give away some more money. How about our weekly product review winner? Um, this week we have uh, Vicki Alley with Creative Crafts. Um, Vicki, she, she, um, she reviewed our 8x10 Chromalux panel in the matte white. That's a U4008. She said she received two pieces in her Christmas in July box and she had to try them. She absolutely loves these. They are so easy to press, just takes a few minutes longer because you have to pre-press and hover your image, but so worth it. They're absolutely beautiful. I'll definitely be buying more. Thanks for the sample. I never would have tried these. So thank you so much, uh, Vicki. That's awesome. Now you have $25 Congratulations, credit. Congratulations, Vicki. So guys, the next one of you to go and review your product, I will give you $25 in Condi cash. So go review a product. Tell me what you think. Tell me if it's working. Tell me if it's not working. If you want even more chances to win, write me a little blog. Send me some pictures. Send it to submitablog at condi.com and I'll give you $25 Condi, Condi cash. All these great ways to win money. Yeah, and, and one of the points uh, Vicki brings up is that often you're not going to try a new product. You're not, you're not even if it's an old product, because it's just not something you're, you're interested in. It's not something you think your clients would be interested in. And I would tell you to do it anyway. Try stuff, show it to your clients, let them decide. So when I teach my classes, I always remind people, don't let your opinions get in the way of making money. That's right. All right. So... Um, tis the season and uh, October is coming up faster than we could ever imagine and so for that we have a new flash sale for the month of September so starting tomorrow Saturday for online orders um, we'll have a flash sale on our pumpkin coasters our pumpkin ornaments and our ghost ornaments so get on there tomorrow place your online order uh, take advantage of some great flash sales and let's press them. Absolutely. Let's do it. All right. Do you have a question? Yeah. What's the shelf life of the Subblejet R? So uh, the question is, what's the shelf life of the Subblejet R? So uh, I, I guess they're asking about the ink. And so the there'll be a use-by date on each cartridge. And that'll tell you when, um, you know, when, you know, you obviously should have used the cartridge up. Um, but they're generally, nowadays, they're generally a good ways out. Um, and so uh, not too much of a, of a challenge using up the inks, you know, say um, 12, 18 months, things like that. But um, the, all the inks, I, I think, now have an excellent shelf life. Okay, well, somehow I printed my designs on regular paper, I think. You want to go print them and I'll keep talking? I'll go something? print them. You keep talking. Okay. Lindsay, cut my mic real quick. All right, so she'll run and uh, just, yeah, turn her mic off. And so um, this is your good chance to ask questions um, as Sprite uh, runs and um, prints. And that's always the fun thing about sublimation is realistically you can do everything so fast. What question was, do we sell retail or wholesale only? So um, the question is, do we sell retail or wholesale? So we're wholesale. Um, there is no retail portion of what we do um, so it, it's a wholesale because we're selling like a blank product um, you know we do have do have a print services department and that is that is a department that again is is set up for wholesale folks um, so we try to make it very simple to do business with us but we're not open to to the public to come in and 
ask us to make them a mug or something like that. That's that's not what we're all about. Um, go ahead. There is a new catalog out now. Um, has it been out very long at all? And uh, Lindsay, you can verify, but I believe it's on the website. Um, you can uh, download, check it out. Um, I don't have one right in front of me, but a little bit different color, uh, different, excuse me, a little bit different cover. Um, so, and also I believe, uh, Lindsay, correct me, but this one has clickable links in it. So uh, you can open it as a PDF and click on it. There's also a um, unbranded catalog, um, and the website is Easy Customs. That's right, Easy Customs. And you can link to that. There, there's no indication, whatever, that it's us. It's just a website that you can provide a link so your clients can sort of see the full thing. Um, uh, Sprite made this, I guess, today. This is our new outdoor Unisub aluminum, and it is designed as a replacement parking sign. So it's 12 by 18 with the appropriate holes to put there. So um, I think we're going to have a lot of fun putting up some of these around here. Um, so if you want to get out there and provide some custom parking signs, think about adding the the company's logo to it um, making it a little bit more fun interesting so this is just an amazing way um, to to push sublimation outdoors if you've got an sg800 you know throw in a piece of you know 13 by 19 13 by 21 paper and and you're all set So the question is a good question, is what's the difference between um, a SG3110 and SG400? And um, there's not a lot of difference, as it turns out. Um, so ultimately, uh, the, the short version of the story is um, one is branded RICO, one is branded Sawgrass. So ultimately, we ask RICO um, and Sawgrass to, to help improve our industry, to improve every aspect of it so ultimately the duplex unit was designed out of the 3110 so the SG400 does not have that part it was a fragile part and then um, um, we asked Sawgrass to um, upgrade the inks um, and so they they have a new version of the ink it's called HD ink and so but if you had a 3110 um, I would I would keep using it um, you know, both are, are fantastic printers. Sawgrass also did something else for folks that maybe aren't familiar with graphic software, don't know any software to use, don't own any software. So with the SG400 and 800, they bundle with it a free lifetime license for what we call Creative Studio. Creative Studio is a cloud-based designer, um, which is sort of unique. You, you do it through your browser. Um, and, and it has Corel-like features. And you know, the first time I saw, saw Creative Studio was probably, I don't know, it was three years ago, something like that. And I was going like, I don't think this is gonna fly, you know? Um, it, its features seem to be limited, um, but spring forward to, you know, um, at the end of August 2018, and it's actually quite, quite good. So it really does allow a person who doesn't know much of anything about graphics to get in there and design some, some great products. It has built-in templates, which we send to Sawgrass and they add for our products. Um, in addition, um, Sawgrass will be rolling out, like next month, um, an option where you can pay a little money every month and get access to their premium art library. Um, a little bit different from what we have at Condi Design, um, but still, it's still exciting. So they continue to grow the product, um, and um, for a lot of people, it's exactly what the doctor ordered. So what you're pressing there? All right, so I've got our, our um, pumpkin hardboard coaster, and... I just Beautiful pressed, colors. Yeah, I wow. pressed this for 60 seconds 
um, for medium pressure, 100 degrees or 400 degrees. And there you go. look at that. Look at the colors in that. Good. Isn't it amazing? She can just go up there, print. No. Well, somebody changed my paper on me. Yep. And I think also you had a, a little bit of a computer issue. So Sprite is one of these kind of people. Um, she just doesn't let things get in her way. Okay, guys. So next we're going to do... Lindsay's laughing because I've been sharing an office with her for the past week. And I've been like freaking out because my computer's broken but we're getting it done you know we're getting it done all right guys so next we're going to do our ghost ornament um this is u4405 this is our unisub metal double-sided when you get the when you download the template it's going to come like this not designed but you get it and so what i'm going to do i'm going to press both sides at the same time and to do that i'm going to take it i'm going to fold my paper i'm going to use the light to match up my image edge there we go. Just kind of crease it, make a little sandwich. Spray just a tiny bit of Pro Spray in the middle. Yeah, Pro Spray is essential in this case because there's no place that I know of, at least, to put heat tape. Yeah, and if you're going to heat tape one side, then, you know, it's going gonna, it's gonna to show on the other side, and it's just not going to be good. You're not going to have a good time. All right, so we're going to press this double-sided, one minute, 60 seconds. No, one, that's the same thing. One minute, medium pressure, 400 degrees. Yeah, you know, on this kind of stuff, you might, might as a rule, push your time up a little bit. Um, well, yeah, well, normally the time is 45 seconds, but because we're doing double-sided, we're yeah. going to do it for a minute. I typically, you know, like to do, you know, you know, especially when you put lots of stuff on your press, push it up to a full minute, uh, say minute 30, things like that. But, it, you know, the Unisub material... Um, it will withstand going too long. It, it does just fine. But it's like cooking. It's never okay to undercook food. Um, but generally, you can get away with a little bit of overcooking because these, these heat presses all cycle in temperature just like the, your home thermostat. And so if you catch it on a downstroke and whatever, you, so always you know, pressing a little bit longer is a good thing. Um, in addition, as you take our instructions, it's always a wise thing to test and then tune. So, for instance, you know, a smaller burner is going to take longer to cook food than, say, a larger burner, even though there is, what about Black Friday? And um, so I believe we've been talking a little bit about that. A little bit. Yeah. We, yeah. We, had... we, we prepare for Black Friday for a long time. So, yeah. So, um, in fact, uh, you might want to think of it as black week yeah um so we want to have a lot of fun uh during that and so um we're gonna know. have all kinds of fun stuff going on all kinds of fun stuff i mean and i bet i bet there might be another black box who think so um probably you know we you know we like we like y'all to step outside your comfort zone and do stuff you're not comfortable with and yep. that black box is is full of stuff full of stuff um yeah i've seen a list floating around here i think have you? Um, yeah i haven't yeah. seen that list yet so uh, if you have any suggestions uh what you'd like to see in the uh, black box uh, you're always welcome to send them in can't make any promises but um yeah, no think, 20 uh, by 30 pieces of glass. Sorry, yeah. not this time, guys. <laughs> not this time. Not this time. By the way, at the Sakaka show, I had brought some 5 by 7 color light glass, and we did it through the kiosk, and it was a hoot. It looked so good. Um, we had a lot of fun, so I think um, we're going to pack some more 5 by 7 color light glass. It's so elegant looking, very rich. Think of that um, wedding photograph, um, maybe a... First communion um, kind of, of scene. Um, I remember making my kids all their first communion kinds of gifts. Um, um, and I used glass, as a matter of fact, you know, many years ago. So really turned out great. All right. Yeah, it looks good. Yeah. It's a little warm. I yeah, you've you've burned the fingernail, burned the uh, fingerprints off your fingers there, I guess, right? Yeah. yeah. You get used to the heat, I suppose. You suppose. 
Yeah, okay. Um, yeah, you do. But we, I've noticed that when I'll, I'll burn my fingers, and I'm like, oh, that, that kind of hurt a little bit. But then the next day they peel. And I'm like, why are my fingers peeling? Oh, yeah, because I burned the skin off of them. So wearing gloves is, is a good thing. Yes, it is. It really is. Okay, guys, so this is, these are, you I have it. press. Oh, okay. You I'm trying close. to pull it okay. down. Yeah. All right, guys, so I have our really cute ghost ornament that says, Happy Halloween. Here, you want to hold it? I'm gonna let, I'm gonna let, ooh, it's, yeah, it's kind of warm. Hold by the string. I'm gonna let Lindsay demonstrate since she knows what the camera looks like. Yeah, we're running dual cameras for Facebook and YouTube, so. All right, and then there's, there's our pumpkin. All right, guys, and um, I wanna tell you about where I got these backgrounds for, for these two. Um, these two images. So there is a website that I use. It's called pexels.com. It's like pixels, but with an E, P-E-X-E-L-S.com. And they have all of these really, really cute background images that are free to use. Um, so let me say about free to use. So we're not guaranteeing they're, they're royalty free, free use. We're just telling you of a resource that we've seen out there. You should always check things out on your own to verify. Um, um, you know, that it really is uh, royalty free. Um, so, you know, if, if you really need lots of artwork, then you can obviously buy it through people like Shutterstock, through uh, Digital Art Solutions, has their huge libraries. They, they're massive. So, there's a lot of folks out there in the industry uh, where you can find, find um, some great artwork to sort of begin with. All right, guys, so I'm trying to cool my press down. I have to go to 300 degrees because the next thing we're going to do is some Flex Soft. So I want to show you. Um, so Doug has been playing. Oh, no, that's cool. That's, okay, that's fine. Yeah, that's, that's cool. Um, so Doug has been playing around um, with putting our, Plex, our Flex Soft on metal. And I just want you guys to look at how cool that looks. So we're going to do multimedia decoration here. So we already have our subtle sparkle down on our metal, and now we're gonna cross our fingers. So the advantage of this hybrid decorating is in the case of Flexoff, um, they've got some metallics out there that look super good. Yeah. Um, Flexoff, to me, outside of sublimation, is probably the most exciting thing because what you need to do it is is so minimal. All you need is is a monochrome laser printer, and then you pick the color of vinyl, you print on it. You you uh, it is a it has a simple weeding step, and then you press. Yeah. So you're gonna when you get your your Forever Flex off, it's gonna come in two sheets. You're gonna have your um, this is called your uh, your foil sheet, and then this is called your B paper sheet. So um, the first thing you want to do is I've ran this through, I have an Oki, just a regular, um, you know, reg regular Oki printer. And uh, so the first thing I want to do is just trim it down a little bit. So I'm just going to trim a little bit off of all of the edges because I want it to be smaller than this paper. So I'm just going to trim it a little. And guys, if you, um, if you ever have any questions on the Flexsoft, uh, we, Doug is so knowledgeable. He has so many videos up. Um, you know, always check our YouTube. Yeah, check Condi TV. Um, or you could just go to YouTube and do a search for Condi space, whatever you're looking for. In this case, Flexsoft. Mm -hmm. On the Flexsoft, yes, you, you have to mirror the image on the Flexsoft, yeah. Because you're gonna print it, um, you know, it, you, you print it like this, and then it actually sticks to this paper. So this is the paper that's going to, wait, I might be confused on that. Um, we'll see. I've only done this a couple of times, so we'll see. But yes, you do have to mirror the image, I know that. Print your design in mirror image mode, for sure. All right. Yeah, right, okay, yeah. Yeah, and then this, this piece you lay down. Okay, gonna wait for my press to cool a little bit. See, I thought, I had the thought we should have brought two presses in today, but, you know. So, um, other topics, questions for us as we're waiting for the press to cool? 
And if you guys, um, so Roger sent an email not too long ago, um, I think it was yesterday actually, asking if, uh, you know, if you have any topics that you want him to cover, um, you know, let us know. Uh, you can always email David Gross at condi.com. You can email me, smcdonald at condi.com. Um, you know, we're always here to help. Uh, if you have any questions on design or product or anything you see here, you know, just, just, just call and let us know. Trying to think of other common questions. Um, so we talked about Ooh. the printers. So it's always a good idea to keep your printer turned on. Um, what I recommend is um, that you purchase a inexpensive UPS, which is called an uninterruptible power supply. I like the brand APC. Um, you can get it on eBay, Amazon, Best Buy. And um, you would hook up your computer and your sublimation printer to it. Do not hook a laser printer to the UPS side of it. It has a surge side and a UPS side. The laser printers you know, take too much power. Um, so what happens is under momentary power outages, which of course happen, um, it's going to run for a few minutes and, and keep your device and your computer turned on and then provides a degree of protection from surge, from surges, uh, things like that. Nothing's going to protect um, um, your, your device against a lightning strike if it's, if it's direct. Um, so, also, you know, I had a client um, just a little while ago, I was informed they, they got flooded. So I'm not positive where they were, were located, I forgot to ask, but they, their sublimation printer was two feet underwater. So, um, you know, the moral of the story is, is prepare for situations like that. And one of the best ways is to make sure your files are backed up. Um, to a portable hard drive that you're swapping out on a monthly basis. And then number two is make sure your files are backed up to the cloud. Uh, there's a lot of great services out there uh, from uh, Google Drive to OneDrive to Carbonite, you name it. Uh, but make sure you're doing it. Um, they really are going to help you uh, recover from you know, a situation like that. And the other is in this case, you know, I don't know how likely the guy was to have a flood but obviously insurance doesn't cover uh, natural floods, so um, if you're able to purchase um, the, the government flood insurance, usually it's not too expensive for most people, um, and so we're going to try to figure out how we can help him out at this point, get him back in business, um, because losing, you know, your way of making money obviously is something that um, uh, we want to make sure we we, we help him get him back in business. Uh, questions so far? Um, always looking for new video ideas. And um, so as you have a video suggestion you'd like us to do, um, very much open. We did videos this past Monday and I already have a nice list for the next upcoming uh, video window. So videos are a great way to educate people, show them sort of, you know, how to take care of their equipment or whatever. I'm going to do, um, I've been asked on this press to have a video showing how you can calibrate the pressure sensor. Uh, people like Sprite and myself, we go by feel, but there is, believe it or not, a actual pressure sensor on the press, and it's on the bottom of the display, it gives you numbers, and there's a calibration procedure. Um, I've not done it before, but I've now read the instructions on how to do it, and looks pretty cool. So who knows? I might might be changed and um, actually look at the display to to fine tune um, your pressure. So we waiting for it to decrease there, Miss Bright. Yeah, we got a couple seconds left. Okay. Um, so putting the Nomex pad on there. So some of the times the 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 stuff we use is a little bit confusing. She just put on the white Nomex pad. Uh, the Nomex pad is used for a variety of things. So I tell everybody, especially those that are getting into sublimation, is you'll need, you know, what I would call your standard accessories like heat tape. Um, you need Pro Spray. You really need a Nomex pad. Um, really need a green pad. Um, we're we're anti-Teflon people around here, so Teflon is rarely used, but we do use Teflon for the Sublisparkle. Um, and the mates. And the mates and the 
um, hot plate, you know, thing and the sublimation patches. Yep. Um, and I, a few things. I mean, it's just it's a handful a things. of things. So a sheet and, of Teflon probably is a wise thing. Yeah, it really, really, you use it when you're you're working with a substrate that has an adhesive on it because you don't want that adhesive to go into your, um, you know, go into your bottom platen. So, uh, so that Teflon, having that Teflon there is always a good idea. All right, are you ready? I'm ready. I'm Let's ready go. too. Okay, so the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna going to um, put our our foil on our backing. So I just have a couple pieces of copy paper. I have my my foil smaller than my backing sheet. And this is the Flex Off product is what we're talking soft, about yeah. that's used with your monochrome R color laser printer. All right, so I'm gonna do this for 90 seconds at medium pressure. Not enough. Okay. All right, so we're gonna let that go. And then, so what that's gonna do is that's gonna take the toner that was on my foil sheet and transfer it to my backing sheet. And then I'm gonna take that backing sheet, which kind of has um, basically like a white backing. So um, this is what's gonna allow you to press on dark colored fabrics and things like that. And then I'm gonna take that, place it on my metal, cross my fingers, it's gonna look amazing. Yes? Does it matter what side of the backing sheet you press to? Yeah. Um, yes, it does. And um, when, you, when you buy the Forever Flex Soft, you get this, uh, this really good informative sheet and it tells you um, exactly how to do it step by step. There's so many videos we have on how to do it. Um, and so, watch yeah, the videos. Definitely um, watch the videos. I have so many people and of course I'm, I'm guilty as always. You want to get into it without reading the instructions and you think it's intuitive, but um, watch the videos, read the instructions. Um, is, is a great aid in ensuring that your first one is gonna gonna look great. Okay, I'm nervous. Yeah, you know. I'd forgotten the dwell time was 90 seconds. Yeah, so it's 90 seconds. It's 90 seconds. So a little bit longer dwell time, but it is 300 degrees. Well, and it's it's also the metallic. Yep. Um, so, so Flex Off, coolest product ever. It really, I mean, it just, really is. I come from a t-shirt background, and being able to do this is just so cool. What was the time of temperature? Three hundred degrees uh, Fahrenheit for ninety seconds, I believe. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so I peeled my backing off, and I just used like a really kind of quick downward stroke, and so. So I was wrong. So okay, so the um, the toner is what actually sticks to this, and I can show you guys this. So this is going to be the white backing, and it stuck to where my toner is. I may have a little mistake mess up right there. We'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Okay, so now I'm ready to put it on my metal. Wait, first I need to trim it again, just in case any of that white got um, you know got adhered to this sheet. So we're just going to trim it down. Okay. Moment of truth. And I'm going to keep my stars off of the heat press because I don't want to heat those again. So, you know, you could just literally go crazy with some of this. You could have stacked metal um, on this piece, hybrid decorating. But the, the object here is, is not exactly what we're doing, but it's just putting tools in your toolbox that allow you to add value to the products you're producing. So, um, you know, you'll, you'll come up with your own ideas of, of what you see that's exciting. And so... Um, so we haven't changed temperature. How long will we press? So I'm going to press it for a minute okay. and I'm going to see what happens. And okay. so the Flex Off is designed for shirts. That yeah. was what it was. 
and it's amazing product for that. Obviously, we're pushing the limits here. We are, but you know, um, so I've seen uh, I've seen it done on little like notebooks, which is really really cute. You go buy like the kind of vintage paper looking notebooks. They they stick on those really really well. Um, they stick on T-shirts really well. Um, you know, we're just trying to like like David said, we're just going to try to push the envelope a little bit, see what we can get accomplished today, and you know, maybe it works, and maybe next week I come back and I go, hey guys, I was doing it wrong. This is how you have to do it because I am. I know it. I know it'll work. And also at a low temperature, I, my recollection on this would need Doug here to be the the expert. But um, at that low temperature, that's why it's successful at pressing to um, say 50-50 shirts, things like that. Yeah. All right. So I do have to let this cool, and I have to. Get, I'm going to have to peel it cold. So I'm going to take it, place it back on my heat, uh, my cool plate. Say again. Yeah. Oh, oh, accessories kind of thing. So, um, the good news is, when you if you call in and you're getting into sublimation, um, your, your condi rep is going to help you with all this. But essentially, um, this this is what comes to mind. So, um, after the printer and heat press, that is. Um, you know, you really need a roll of what I call uncoated white butcher paper. Um, and um, you can show them ours over here, um, over there. So you can get stuff like that at Sam's Club. You can get stuff at an um, um, office supply place. You can also buy it from Uline. Uline is, is obviously a place, lots of things. Next is, um, I really want you to have a Nomex pad. Many of the products, um, uh, you'll need the Nomex pad, um, especially if you're pressing um, some of the uh, porcelain Christmas ornaments. So we'll start doing that for ourselves and family and all that. Um, you want to have a green pad, um, and a green pad is used on a number of products like, for instance, the acrylic. Um, then you want to have Pro Spray and heat tape. That's to anchor your transfer. Um, Gloves would be very good. Um, obviously, a pair of scissors, something like that. Um, think of other helpful accessories, or just we'll call them just the. Did the, you say a, a convection oven? No, I didn't. Convection so, oven is a really cheap, easy way to get into doing mugs, um, doing our new cups. It is. Uh, yeah, really, really cool. So, so convection oven allows you to do. Um, Pretty much mugs, stuff like that, steins, uh, dog bowl, um, the new polymer stuff. Um, so you, you, great opportunity, and they're very inexpensive. The one that, that I tend to love at this point is the Wolfgang Puck pressure oven. Um, I think that is our Cuisinart brick oven that we have here um, beside me. But side note, if you do get a convection oven, make sure you get a, an internal thermometer for it. Um, you want to have that temperature at a steady 400 degrees, um, and you, you're not going to be able to get that just by the readout on the machine. You need a thermometer in there next to your product. And going back to the accessories, I would say getting you a digital metal candy thermometer, digital metal candy thermometer. You buy one on eBay, $7 or something. And those are very helpful for checking your heat press temperature. Um, you know, whether you spend a lot of money for your press or not, um, most of the time a press will need to be calibrated. In this case, once you have that, it's got a metal probe with the digital end. You can put it underneath there, just lay the press down, uh, without locking in place and then do a check and then I've got a video for the George Knight presses that show you how shows you how to make the the reading on the thermometer agree um, you know the press to agree with the thermometer you can adjust it so this is this is a extremely nice um, fully digital press so it's got lots of bells and whistles okay I'm nervous here we go No, no, I don't know if it's going to work now. Hmm. 
Think I should press it a little longer? Yeah, I think it's it's tough on the, the um, unicep, but it looks like I, I can't tell if it's could be longer or shorter. Mm -hmm. But hey, we gave it a good try. You know, we did give it that old and, college and try. And what we're going to do is we're going to come back and on a future broadcast, and we will, we will figure out, um, you know, what the what the what next one wrong? will be. Yeah. So oh well. um, I am not sure Doug is the flex off expert hmm. kind of stuff, but um, well, that's the the fun of live TV, isn't it? Um, trial and error, learn new things, and so we will. Um, We'll, we'll endeavor to find out. As you know, one of my tips that I, I can't emphasize enough, especially for beginners, is my wall of shame. And so once we analyze what we did wrong, um, then, then we could put that up there, so to speak, to say, okay, here's an example of if you do this, what, was, what the outcome is, and then how, um, how should it be done. And so with the Unisub, um, unlike many products, the Unisub has such an amazing coating. It really is uh, one of the advantages of that, this coating is it's graffiti resistant, meaning you could spray paint the thing and then let it dry, wipe it away with lacquer thinner. So it is, it is incredibly tough. Um, it's chemically resistant, you know, it's scratch resistant. So it's very difficult to make a product like this, this stick. Um, so, you know, we'll we'll hmm. we'll find out what we did and we'll play around with it. Keep going. Yeah. Oh well. Here's the panel. So no owl. The foil. But the show them, sparkle turned show them, out well. Go ahead and pull the. Show them what the foil looks like okay. coming off. I mean, like. Yeah. So you guys can see, like this part down here kind of came off, but um, this kind of messed up a little bit. Uh, so it should have, you know, it should have just pulled off in one fail swoop. Yeah, but here's a here's a piece of the foil, and this would, you know, be I it again. It's ideal for, you know, transferring and melting into a garment. That's it's ideal, and once it's on there, it's not coming off because it's designed for that. Um, the Forever folks at one time, I think they did actually have some hard substrate uh, foil. Um, I've forgotten what it is, but again, um, I think the success is probably a little dependent on on the substrate. Well, and and my original idea was to do some linen, but but Doug was successful, right? Because you've got yeah, the panel. Yeah, he, Where, um, where's the panel? Well, yeah, he did pretty good. So, but then again, he he did not do it on on sublimation. But the back panel looks really good. Okay, so this is a a Dinosub. what this is is a less expensive metal. Mm -hmm that um, probably got a whole lot better chance of sticking to it. The Unisub is such a, um, you know, resistant to abuse product. Um, so I think what we'll do next week is maybe we'll do some tile or something that's more porous. And I think, I think we'll have a way better success rate I, with and that. And I bet if you use like um, the matte or the satin tile, yeah. that's gonna grab, exactly. um, grab it. See, you guys learn with us. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Um, I think that's it. Anything else? Well, that's all Questions for us today? So, um, again, we very much appreciate you being with us, and uh, please let us know how we can uh, serve you in the, in the future. And have a great uh, long weekend. I hope everybody um, enjoys uh, Monday, uh, Labor Day, right? That's right, yes, sir. And um, all day. we'll get back together next Friday. So this has been David Gross with Sprite. Thank you, Sprite. Thank you, guys. Thank you. That works.